In newsrooms around New York today, they are telling their favorite Roger Grimsby stories. The former Channel 7 anchorman died this morning at Lenox Hill Hospital. He was 66 years old. Roger worked with members of the Channel 2 news team who are veterans of the Eyewitness newsroom. They've gathered now to share their memories of a friend and former colleague. And joining me are Lou Young, John Johnson, John Flattery, McGee Hickey. All of you worked with Roger Grimsby on Eyewitness News. All of you here now with us at Channel 2. And John, you worked with Roger the longest, 14 years. 14 years, that's right. Uh, wonderful 14 years with an exceptional person. Roger was an extremely different man. And um, he was keen-minded. He had a great sense of humor. He also was someone who was truly a great writer. And um, there was something about Roger that there was a kind of loneliness about Roger, you know. But one of the things that we did on many occasions, we'd stay up late into the wee hours of the morning, typically with Roger, <laughs> <laughs> uh, telling war stories. And I, I, I'll tell you this about Roger, that um, he went through some of the worst fighting in the Korean War. And his unit at one point came under heavy attack, and most of his unit was wiped out. And Roger told me that he was in a foxhole expecting to die. He had seen everyone around him die. And that experience, I think, so much forged the kind of steel that he had in his character and his desire also to let the chips fall where they may, tell the truth. He was a courageous man. I'll tell you a quintessential Roger Grimsby story, okay? Um, I had a going away party from Channel 7 and there was a correspondent there at the party who had known Roger Grimsby. He came up to Roger and he said, well, Roger, you know, I've uh, admired you over the years. I've seen your work. I, I've loved your work. And kind of sucking up to Roger. And typically, in Roger fashion, Roger turned to him and said, well, I've seen your work and I don't like it very much. I mean, that, that, that was Roger. Yeah. You had to deal wow. with that There was, with no, Roger. There was no, no standing on ceremony. Not. But once yeah. you had his respect, mm. and you would not necessarily know that, he would defend you fiercely. Definitely. And um, I had a, a, an experience uh, when Paul Castellano was killed. I went on the air and ha assessing the situation, uh, said on the, in a live report that it was an apparent mob hit. I didn't think it was a big stretch, but apparently somebody back in the newsroom took issue with my characterizing it, making a leap of faith. Well, uh, in a bar across the, uh, from the newsroom, uh, across from the station, <laughs> that night, he, Darnia came to blows uh, over this, and I heard about it later. He never said anything to me, but he defended my work and my reputation fiercely. And that's how I found out that Roger Grimsby didn't dislike me, let alone respected my work. He, he was very slow to warm to you, but once, once you gained his friendship, it was a very wonderful thing to have, and, and, and I, I feel grateful to, to a be able to say he was it's, my friend. It's a terrible loss. And John Slatter, you have one of the best kept secrets in broadcasting. Well, he was, uh, in addition to being on TV in New York, as we all knew, he was on the radio all over the country on ABC Network Radio. And one day I did a profile of Roger on television, and I was able to spend a day or two with him and crepes around after. I'd ask him, why you go to ABC every day to the network to do this radio thing? I said, you know, you're well known, you're well paid, you don't need this extra work. And he said, I do. He said, I need a self-imposed discipline. He mm -hmm. said, I have to be there at one o'clock every day. Right. I have to write a five-minute newscast. I have to submit it to an editor. She or he have to go over it, make corrections, give it back at three o'clock. I go on, I read the news. And he said, then I come over to the newsroom and he would typically have a handful of wire copy right. and he'd throw it at the five o'clock producer and he'd say, you got these? <laughs> and if the kid didn't have these, Roger would read them on the air anyway. So he was fiercely, fiercely interested in the news and making sure that stories that he felt were important were in the newscast because he knew it cold every day. He'd been over it. Just didn't come in and read. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. McGee, your memory. What I loved so much, he was always rooting for the underdog in the newsroom. And when I was at Channel 7, I was the underdog. I was the per diem, <laughs> non-contract <laughs> reporter. And the news director, who will go nameless in this story, came up to me one day and said, I like your work a lot, but you don't have a contract and we're running out of money, so as of tomorrow, you don't have a job here anymore. So Roger was so upset about this. He got his desk, uh, he, he went in and got his chair from his office and he sat next to me for the entire day as I cleaned out my desk and every time that news director walked by he said I'm so upset what you're doing about McGee Hickey she's gonna be around in TV news in New York City when you're off somewhere else and that person is off somewhere else Aww. and Roger would always remind me of that he'd say you know you're gonna stick around and all those other people are gonna be gone 
That's not nice. great. Sir, now Lou, give us the famous Mora Wolenski story, okay. please. Oh, please. This was, the, the building came to a complete halt because the end of the 5 o'clock news, I think it was Anne Scamardella was on the set, mm -hmm. and, and um, a reporter, Mora Wolenski, um, got caught flipping the bird. And, and it was like <laughs> on TV, and, and the place came to a stop. It was an awful thing to happen on a, on a TV show. And uh, they didn't, nobody knew what to do. The 6 o'clock news is about to start, and Roger picks up the ball, and you see what he does. <laughs> Mara Walensky is here to tell us about a part of history you might not have known blacks were involved in. Mara. Well, no more school. Well, as Mara Walensky would say, we're number one. <laughs> Such a fast wit. I mean, he's just unbelievable. Because everybody else was paralyzed. The, mm -hmm. the place yeah. came to Only Roger knew uh, yeah. to say something. What kind of a family man was he? Well, he had his daughter, Karen. I mean, and... Uh, he was uh, very concerned about his daughter. He was a loving man. And underneath Roger's so-called, you know, hard exterior, beat the heart of an extremely gentle and kind and very giving person. I mean, I truly give so person. So devoted to his wife for right. the last six years, yes, Maria. Maria. It was Maria very sad they didn't best. have more years together. Right. Yeah, that, that's the real tragedy here, is that, is that Maria and Roger have, have uh, lost each other. And, right. uh, and we have all lost a good friend. Right. How did he face his, his cancer and his... his I, I think that Roger, when I uh, spoke with him and saw him the last time, I mean, he took it almost as a part of life. You know, Roger, in some ways, you could say a little like Mickey Mantle, he abused his body. And even with the knowledge that he had cancer, Roger did not change who Roger was. Okay. Yeah. He, he lived that way. I mean, you have to take your hat off to a guy who just um, was... What you saw on television was what you got. Well, but in 20 years at, at uh, Channel 7, he never missed a day. Never. And not many no. people who run the really He loved, he loved to go right. to the neighborhood bars, yes. right, Lou? He loved to go and as, as, chat as just and a lot of little fun yes. and, uh, yes. you know, okay. He's, he a, great, he's yeah. a great guy. To, he wouldn't wear makeup. Everybody, everybody right, wears right. makeup. We all hate yeah. it. Roger refused, and he needed yeah. it more than anybody. Oh, exactly. <laughs> because it wasn't yeah. honest, and that's, yeah. that was a problem. He, he couldn't, to be he couldn't not tell the truth. Yeah. I know one thing, John Johnson, that uh, Roger was very happy about your new job at Channel 2. He went to your going away party recently, right. the Channel 7 party, right. and probably no one was happier than Roger for Roger you. Roger was. And we're looking forward to seeing you on Monday, I might add. And as for me, I, I just remember being 25 years old, coming to this market 16 <laughs> years ago, turning on the set, and somebody said, there's Roger Grimsby. That's, That's the competition, right. a formidable... Well, thank oh, you very right. much, Michelle. Yeah. Thank you I'm all. I'm up for the challenge. I'll okay. You. I'm up for the challenge. Thank you thank all you. For, for sharing your stories of Roger Grimsby, a remarkable man. Thank and you. we'll be back with more news in just a minute. Good evening. I'm Roger Grimsby. Here now the news. Officially, there are now 50 U.S. hostages being held at the end of the...